Maria, when you're looking at the story of Paul and you're sitting here watching this beautiful, wonderful dog be a lifesaver, one of many dogs, what makes a dog so adaptable, so smart, so intelligent that they're able to basically accomplish this task that no human ever could? Right. Well, these dogs have special training and they're finding out more and more it is by virtue of their incredible noses. Their olfactory system is amazing. They smell things we could never dream of smelling. So to be able to smell the subtle chemical change in Paul that we would never know what that is. Science doesn't have to know what it is because Coira knows what it is. And I see this across the board with all kinds of illnesses that dogs are detecting low blood sugars. They can even wake up from sleeping to tell their person that they're having low blood sugar while they're sleeping and prevent comas. There are all kinds of new uses, people with sleep disorders, seizure disorders. There is the first paper ever about dogs actually being able to smell the scent of pre-seizure this year. People who have those dogs who alert them to seizures say, yeah, of course my dog knows that, but now it's been studied and proven. And so the dog's nose is so incredible in many laboratories around the world, they're going in and sniffing for cancer in, in, in research facilities, but they're all pet dogs who go in for the day, they have fun, their paycheck is um, a lot of love and praise and maybe a little treat or a toy, and they're finding that they can detect cancer in very early stages. Wow. The nose knows. Wow. I mean, are there certain breeds that the olfactory system is, is better developed at certain? No. It can be almost any breed. What they really look for is the desire for a treat. If they are food driven or uh -oh. reward driven. Oh, Cora heard treat. So <laughs> <laughs> that was you. See, just like you that. Oh, you do Cora have a treat. loves Good. her treats. So my dog, for instance, would probably be great because he lives for treats. And so a dog has to be really reward driven. And it can be any breed of dog as long as they're into the work. But I want to highlight one thing that, that you said, Paul, and this may be the most understated element of this. You went from having to wear a helmet when you were at school, for instance, to having the coolest best friend in, yeah. Absolutely. in the building. Absolutely. Like people come up and they want to introduce themselves and get to know me just because I have a dog. I mean, and then I make friends through that. It's, it's a way to meet people that I would never have met otherwise. Good way to meet girls, too. I, right? yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know exactly what where you're saying? heading, young but man. But you know what? I think you say it's the dog, and I'm sure people like your dog, but you've seen really nice and fun, and just people just want to hang out with you. So it might not be all the dog. They just. The yeah, trick is come for the dog, stay for the person. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And more great stories like this. It's called Dr. Dogs. It's available wherever books are sold on October 1st. And everyone in the audience is going home with a copy. And before we go, I always like to ask, but we've, we've all met. Can I come say hi to Cora? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Totally. I, I have been hosting this entire segment, watching Cora's face, thinking, can I just say hello? <laughs> say Cora, hi, we are so proud of the great work that you do. You're doing such a good job. Yeah, you're such a sweetheart. Thank you for what you do. Nice to meet you. Thank you both, and good luck with the book.